In the early morning rain With a dollar in my hand In the early morning rain With no place to go I don't run runway number nine Big 707 said to go Welcome to my channel, my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Back at the end of September I published an episode of Pass Gas with Doug where I asked you guys to participate in a poll that would help me decide which of four pens I should purchase with my September YouTube revenue money. The four pens were the Twisby Diamond 580 RGT, the Waterman Expert 3 Metallic GT, the Platinum 3776 Burgon, and the Maiora Impronte Terra Oversized. The winner of that poll was the Platinum 3776, which took 38% of the voting. But just like many elections, I ignored the polls and went with what I wanted. Well, just kidding. A little. Because I did ignore the poll, but then I circled back to embrace it again. Let me explain. I've wanted a Platinum 3776 for a while. They are very popular, very good looking, and an excellent value and a low cost option for a gold nib. However, I've had a price point in mind for what I was willing to pay for an injection molded pen, and the 3776 has always hovered just beyond what I feel comfortable paying. I used my cool browser extension Camel 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 to track 3776 prices on Amazon, and although the prices came close a couple of times, they never met my threshold. So I decided to ignore your advice and I was poised to buy the Maiora, which came in second at 31%, until my roving eye found this. A Twisby. The Twisby Diamond 580 RGT came in third at 21% of the vote, but this isn't that Twisby. So many people have recommended I get a Twisby, but again, I struggled with paying some of these prices for what I consider a cheap feeling injection molded plastic Chinese pen with a small nib. That was until I found this Twisby model. The Classic, a model which I had never heard of before. I found it for sale for $75 Canadian, which is $57, $56 US with free shipping from a Canadian online retailer, Stilo.ca, which is based in Quebec. It is not a demonstrator, has a non-metal section, is a piston filler, and is in this exquisite burgundy color. I jumped all over it. So it isn't exactly the Twisby I had in the poll, but it's my very first Twisby, and you Twisby fanatics will be pleased that I'm very pleased with this Twisby. And you Platinum fans, who voted for the 3776 won't be disappointed because I also was able to snag a Platinum in the same budget. No, not a 3776, but a 3776 on steroids. The Platinum President with a broad 18 karat gold nib in another shrewd deal. So let's look at my first Twisby and how I snagged the Platinum President and how my shrewd wheeling and dealing will also benefit you my viewers, 
right now. And this came from Stilo.ca, an online Canadian uh, pen distributor, pen retailer. And I know what this is, and you probably do too because you read the title. But let's open it up and find out. Yes, you guessed it. It's a Twisby. I had been sort of told over and over again for the last couple of years that I should get myself a Twisby. This is a Twisby Classic and it is in the color burgundy. And we have some Twisby documentation and here we have the pen. But that is an incredible burgundy color. I just love it. So we have the Twisby tool. Now I have one. The Twisby silicone grease and the pen. Oh, I like this. This is this feels more like a substantial pen than any of the Twisbys I felt I held in the uh, pen store. I might have joined the Twisby crowd. Who knows? I might have to join a Facebook group. Oh no. So here is my first Twisby, the Twisby Classic Piston Filler in Burgundy. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. And since this is my first Twisby, I did a little research on the company which I'd like to share with those of you who have ink acquiring minds. Those of you who aren't interested and have no curiosity or figure you already know everything can just use the chapters feature of YouTube to skip ahead. Go ahead. Skip. Skip now. Now. We promise we won't talk about you while you're gone. Are they gone? You. you But first, I want to share with you how you can get 10% off your purchase at cultpens.com and how I snagged the Platinum President. Did you see what I just did there? I got rid of the riffraff. So I can share the secret with just you guys. As I mentioned, I was looking for deals on the 3776 and having no luck with online retailers. The U.S. retailers charge almost double the price of the pen for shipping, and the Canadian dollar is worth bupkis against the U.S. dollar right now. And my EU online retailers like Apple Bomb, La Caron de Comte, weren't great deals either. So I checked some online dealers in the U.K. and found the Platinum President. I had not been aware of this model of Platinum either. Of course, I then studied Stephen Brown's video very carefully. Not only was the president on sale at Cult Pens, they were also having a sale for Canadians. With a Canada code, I received another 10% on the pen. Plus, once I purchased the pen with free shipping and no tax, I received a notification that I could get my friends 10% off their purchases as well. So, this is where you come in. Go to cultpens.com and put in Douglas Rathbun, if you spell my name correctly, you will get the 10% off of your purchase. Just put my name in when you check out. You see? You saved money just now by sticking around and listening to the boring old professor. That pen will be here shortly, but until then, let's talk Twisby. So Twisby is a pen company that has been in business since 2009. They're based in Taipei City, Taiwan, and they were born from an OEM manufacturer named Ta Shin Precision that made fountain pens for other companies. I'm pretty sure the first Twisby model was the Diamond 530, which is the predecessor to the Diamond 580 and the 580 AL. The name Twisby is an acronym for the phrase Hall of Three Cultures, or San Wen Tong in Chinese. Yeah, I don't get it either. The character Wen translates into language and culture. Yeah, I don't get that either. The phrase San Wen Tong also brings to mind 
the Hall of the Three Rare Treasures created by Emperor Zhilong as a memorial to three great masterpieces of Chinese calligraphy. The initials of the phrase San Wen Tong was reversed and thus turned into TWS. The last BI was added with its literal meaning of writing instruments, thus combining the two segments and creating, you got it, Twisby. Now, if that is a bit twisted or twisbied, convoluted and hard to follow, blame Twisby and not me, as it is directly from their website. I actually think it sounds kind of cool, like Frisbee or Slinky. It's fun, it's colorful, it's a Twisby. Yes, Log. All kids love Log. What rolls They actually make a terrific range of pens, from the very inexpensive Twisby Go to the more substantial and much more expensive Twisby Vac 700R. Most of their pens are demonstrators and made from injection molded plastic resin. They claim their resins are not cheap plastic. Here is a quote from their website. The main question always seems to be, does Twisby use cheap plastic? The answer is no, we don't. We actually use polycarbonate with a protective coating heat treated onto the pen. This allows for the plastic to have a hard shell, scratch resistant and clear crystal look. Well, that doesn't change the fact that some of their early pens suffered from cracking, which they also addressed on their website. Quote, the follow-up question is, then why does the 530-540 model crack in certain areas? The simple non-chemical answer is, when we first started producing the 530, it was one of the first times experimenting with protective coating around polycarbonate. With this comes the learning curve of the chemical reaction between the heat treated coating and the polycarbonate. Therefore, some people had the experience of cracking barrel or holder on their 530 models and some 540 models. However, as soon as we moved on to the late 540 and now the 580 model and all other models, we have addressed, learned, and fixed this issue. The pens now do not have the previous issue anymore. With that said, we are still improving and will always continuously do so with each product we make. Oh, and a quick FYI, your product's warranty never runs out. From what I read on the various forums, Twisby has indeed solved this issue. And that added line about the warranty never running out, that's a great point. Twisby has a great warranty. That doesn't change my first impression of the regular Twisby line. I went to my pen store and had Carrie take each model of Twisby out of the display case for me. I held each one in my hand. I did not write with them. I just felt the pen, looked closely at the quality of construction, and checked the price. I looked at the Go, Echo, Diamond 580, and the VAC 700R. The Go and the Echo looked and felt like cheap plastic Chinese pens. And overpriced at that. The Diamond 580 felt a bit more substantial and the VAC 700R felt and looked like it might be worth the price point but was still way above what I'd pay for injection molded plastic when I can get a turned acrylic Pen BBS 456 vacuum filler for 40 bucks. And it posts. So finding what is to me a new model of Twisby in this classic at a price point which seemed to be a much more substantial pen for a reasonable price, I decided to take the Twisby plunge. As you'll see, I'm happy I did. Let's look at this pen. Overall, it is a slim pen with some very elegant lines. It might not be apparent at first glance, but the pen is faceted. It is basically a square shape with very round corners. So eight sides with four flat and four curved. This makes the pen very flashy in the light. From the top, we see the Twisby logo, which looks like a biohazard symbol, actually. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. In silver on red, under a dome of acrylic nestled into a chrome metal collar finial. 
This is the really nice version of the Twisby Finial logo. The Echo and the Go have this horrid soft plastic stamped out piece stuck on or embedded into the cap. Wait, I know what that looks like now. It looks like this. But I digress. This pen continues in some very elegant lines and shapes. The clip extends from just under the finial and is nicely tapered, relatively stiff, but very usable. The cap tapers up to the ring, which is also an eight-sided, curved and flatted ring, which is also in the eight-sided faceted shape and has an engraved line on each of the four curved facets. There's a small chrome ring on the top of the barrel, which tapers away exactly the same angle as the cap. So you get this lovely swooping up and swooping down in the same angles of taper over the entire pen, which is uh, very nicely designed and a nice symmetrical balance. The barrel tapers away until we get to this chromed metal blind cap piston filling knob, which has two grooves embedded into it with silicone O-rings in those grooves. More on those rings in a moment. The cap unscrews with one turn, making it an easy half turn twist on and off in both directions. Very quick. And uncapped, we see a section with a nice length and made of the same color plastic material as the cap and body, which is nice. And which is very slightly tapered towards a stainless steel ring on the top of the section and a number five size steel nib. The stainless steel ring is a nice feature which keeps ink from staining your section. I'm of the understanding that these nibs are made by Yovo. At the bottom of the section is a nice ink window and these threads and this step down are very smooth and very unobtrusive. Let's take a closer look at the nib. We see some very light engraving of some scroll work and the Twisby logo, Twisby in block letters, and an M for medium. And there's the plastic feed. The nib and the feed are part of a nib assembly that pulls out, but only after you've removed the section, which comes off very easily, just like that. And then the nib part comes right off. And so this section is just a plastic tube. And there's your replaceable nib unit. And that is a great way to swap nibs. And there are a full range of nib options with Twisby. The cap has an inner liner which looks like it's attached to the uh, cap finial. And along with that, there's a rubber O-ring right at the top of the barrel. The two together should ensure the pen does not dry out while capped. This is a piston filler and the piston works very nicely by turning the knob. It's very smooth. As I showed in the unboxing, the pen comes with the Twisby wrench and a small bottle of silicone grease. The tool fits here in the gap between the piston knob and the body and you tighten it down and you turn this to get at the piston mechanism. That allows you to clean the ink chamber and re-grease the piston. This is a relatively easy thing to accomplish. If you've ever tried to disassemble a Parker 51 or a Pelican M205, then this Twisby is something a monkey could accomplish. Oh, that's just Ricky. <laughs> you own a smoking monkey? What's he doing here? I'm giving him emphysema. The least I can do is let him hang out and watch cable. <laughs> is he deliberately blowing smoke at me? Yeah, he's kind of an ass. However, it is a bit more involved than I have time for in this video. So I'm going to make a follow-up video, which I will publish tomorrow, where I will demonstrate how to disassemble your Twisby Classic piston as well as the nib. If Twisby didn't want idiots like me taking their pens apart, they wouldn't have included tools. So tomorrow is Tool Time with Doug. Looking at the piston knob again, these rubber rings appear to be there to facilitate your grip on the knob because of the slippery metal. However, 
One of the big issues I have with this pen is the fact that the cap won't post securely. It goes on, but it just falls off. How difficult would it be, folks at Twisby, for you to increase the size of these two little silicone O-rings just slightly so it captures and holds the cap in place? In fact, if this little old man in his basement can do it, why can't you young Chinese engineers do it? Here, I'll show you. Doug performs surgery live on camera. I'm going to put my needle underneath that one and pull it off. The only size ring I could find that would work on this was a white one. You put the ring over the tip and you roll it down just like you're doing an O-ring and it flips in place. And guess what folks? That now stays on. Voila! I have fixed your problem from the posting. There is no charge. I have fixed your doorbell from the ringing. There is no charge. Thank you. The pen is very comfortable in the hand even though it is on the slender side. And another nice feature is that no matter how you recap it, the facets always line up. So as I mentioned, I got this pen at a Canadian online retailer called Stilo.ca in Quebec. I got it for $75 Canadian. Here is the sale. The same pen retails at JetPens.com for $56 US, which is just about the same price. I think that's a very good value for what you get with this pen. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, so here is the Twisby Classic with a Pen BBS 456, a Pilot Metropolitan, a Parker Sonnet, and a Lamy Safari. Now let's look at the posted. And here are the pens posted. Pen BBS 456 Vacuum Filler, number 6 size nib, posts extremely well, 40 bucks, made in China. Number 5 size Twisby nib, doesn't post very well, made in China, $56, just saying. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Twisby Classic in Burgundy. And it has a medium steel nib. And the ink today is one that I purchased specifically for this pen. It is a Diamine Merlot. And I have to say, it matches the pen beautifully. I couldn't find a Diamine Burgundy, but a Merlot is close. I don't know my wines. Where's his face? I don't know faces. Let's check the wetness here. That certainly does look like a Merlot color to me. And that is a very wet pen. I have not done anything to this nib right out of the box. Here's the swatch for the Diamine Merlot. And here it is with Monteverdi Canyon Rust and Robert Oster Muddy Wine. And as to line variation, this is a very stiff nib, as you'd expect with steel. That's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. No. And according to my Richard Binder uh, pen line chart, this line is 0.4 millimeters in thickness, which is 0 0.016 inches. Richard calls it a Western XF or a Japanese fine. 
I tend to agree with that. And our writing sample. And for some reverse writing. It's very thin and quite scratchy. And some quick writing. That feed has no difficulty keeping up at all. As we saw up above, it's very, very wet. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I have to say my first impressions of writing with a Twisby pen are excellent. I still have apprehensions about some of the more budgeted models of Twisby, but this pen not only writes impeccably, it is extremely well made, with enormous attention to detail in the engineering and manufacturing. But I'm also impressed by the attention to design aesthetics here too. The way the pen tapers up and down symmetrically and these smooth faceted edges. The same color section as the body and the cap and you have a pen that hits it out of the park for me. And that's not even mentioning the great price point for this pen. 56 bucks US or $75 Canadian is a great value for the money for this pen in my ever increasing not so humble opinion. I also love that Twisby has added a classy well-built non-demonstrator to their line and it is available in a few different colors it comes in black white this burgundy and a sapphire blue i like the ink window and i like the stainless steel ring on the end of the section to help guard against ink staining and i like that the pen's facets line up when you cap the pen and permit me to gush a little further about the brilliant engineering that goes into this pen. I'm going to assume other models in the Twisby line have this same kind of attention to detail, but this classic comes apart very easily for maintenance. No shipping your pen back to France, Germany, or Italy for months to fix a stuck piston. They provide concise instructions, tools, and grease to help you maintain your pen. Watch tomorrow for my video on how to take this pen to pieces. So what do I not like? The couple of things I've already mentioned. The fact that the pen doesn't post securely, or at all actually, and that changing those O-rings might actually solve that issue. Also, the cap doesn't post deeply enough to make the pen shorter when posted. That's about it. Um, I usually don't like slim pens with number five size nibs, but the nib on this pen is superb right out of the box and it's perfectly proportioned to the overall balance of this pen. And as a slim pen, it does not feel uncomfortable for long writing sessions. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.